In today's video, we're gonna check out some more creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. The Great Wall of China, one of the biggest wonders of the world, no? They say this, um, this side is, see, where they throw the arrows to the enemies and that's why they built this giant wall to protect China from their enemies. But you know what's interesting and very curious? This side is outside China. This side, no, I mean, this side is China and this side is outside China. Meaning, this wall, the history is a lie. This wall was not built to protect China from these enemies. It's the enemies which are in this side are protecting themselves from China. So, the Chinese did not build this wall. Who built this wall? I'll tell you, research the Tartarian Empire, yeah? Which was in all this area. And they were defending themselves from the Chinese, not the other way around. History is a lie, geography is a lie, science is a lie, they lied to us. To be completely honest, I don't really know much about the Great Wall of China as far as its in-depth history. I know that the Great Wall of China was supposedly built for protecting China against like nomads and things like that, but I've never heard of this history before where it was actually someone protecting themselves from the Chinese. But I see a comment in here that really is like a really neat comment. It says, uh, history is written by the winner. And I think that is an amazing comment because it's pretty much true when you really think about it. Like, just because there's history written, we don't know the real history. We only know what has been written by the person of that history. So whether it be accurate or not, we really don't know. So I found that comment extremely interesting. And a lot of people really agree that this is like a Tartarian base and it was overrun by China. So that's interesting. What do you guys think about that? Because I've never heard of this before. You no know, night vision now, it's green. Yep. But in the Vietnam War, the night vision goggles that they were issued were red light. Okay. Multiple people in the US military that were using them were seeing what they're reporting as flying demons. Ooh, stop. And so there's an instance where they're flying these helicopters in Vietnam. It was a safe zone, no hostility. And then the gunner in the back just started do, 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 shooting. And the pilot's like, what are you shooting at? This guy, he was like panicked. Yeah. He's like, the demon. Apparently this giant winged demon Demon creature was like flying at him. and then people on the ground in the jungles that were using it they were also seeing like these demonic freaky looking creatures and so the military banned those night vision goggles what? and they replaced them with green light apparently a lot of these dudes they were shook to the yeah, core of I everything mean, that they saw with these goggles on did the bullets work that was I my thought follow it was just up. prayer yeah, i don't know i've looked into it a little bit because i heard the same thing they were putting stuff inside the goggles they the chemical tripping. was literally leaking so they were literally tripping oh, or like it was a hallucinogenic drug it makes you wonder, you know, if if they say that it was leaking a certain chemical that made them hallucinate or if they just had a level of spectrum that really they didn't know anything about and they found out that, oh, well, this lighting spectrum is showing a lot of interdimensional beings and it's making these soldiers, like, freak out. So it makes me wonder if they just came up with a story saying that, oh yeah, these red-lined glasses or these red-lined goggles had a certain chemical that was making people hallucinate. But for them to hallucinate the same thing, the same detail, I get it. It, it can spread like wildfire if someone says, oh man, I see a demon flying around and then the other person that might be having a trip also now is using their imagination and they're also seeing a form of demon. But... I don't know. That's, that's pretty cool, actually. I, I would like to learn a little bit more about these goggles, and can you find an old pair somewhere today? That would be interesting. I'm all down for the Apple Vision, I think that's what they call it, but I don't think I would be brave enough to walk around with a $3,500 headset on my face. Like... Uh, the place that I live, it probably would get snatched pretty fast if you're out in town. But uh, I've never seen Black Mirror. Isn't that like a Netflix show? I don't, I don't have Netflix, so I'm curious. I've heard people say Black Mirror is an incredibly good show, so I might need to watch it. Hello, absolute common sense. huh? Why would they not do this from the factory? What this gentleman's done here is on a Chevy Bolt, the electric car, he's actually hooked up a generator to the frame 
and then a pulley system around the wheel. So as the wheels spin, the generator generates electricity and charges the batteries. Oh, what does that do? Well, it eliminates the need for a charging station now. So as he's driving the car using energy, he's putting energy right back into it. As long as that generator puts out the equivalent of what he's using, he'll never need to recharge his batteries. It'll just constantly keep a charge, theoretically speaking, right? So then why wouldn't they do this from the factory? What do you think the reason is why they would not automatically put a generator? My dad had an e-bike years ago that had a generator in the pedals. So as you pedaled it, it recharged the batteries. Well, why would they not do this naturally with a car? I mean, what is your reason why, huh? Why would they not have a generator already installed to recharge the batteries as you're driving using its own momentum? I am a believer of rechargeable energy like this, but to the extent to charge a fully electric vehicle would take an enormous amount of recycled energy and it kind of breaks the law of thermodynamics but um i don't know i don't feel like it would energize the car enough where the size of generator that was on it yes a motorized bike could definitely be generated that way it's a simple battery but when you're talking about almost 2,000 pounds just of battery alone the recharge rate's just not going to match. In fact, you could end up burning more energy just trying to power the generator, I think. I'm not like a scientist or a rocket scientist or an engineer like that, but um, that doesn't seem like that would work well enough. But I do believe rechargeable energy is possible, but just not like that. They also add generative, uh, regenerative they also add regenerative braking to these types of vehicles to help compensate for some of that lost power. So you would think that they wouldn't even allow that if that was the case. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that's possible to completely charge your vehicle off of its own propelling power? I, I don't feel like it is, but I could be completely wrong. Dang, these houses are gorgeous. What in the hell do these people do for a living? I mean, really? What in the what in the hell do you do for a living? Where you work? You work several part-time jobs? You work overtime? Are they high? <laughs> yeah, in my area, there's a lot of nice houses that you can go to a certain community and it's just like going through a medieval town of castles. It's really Im impressive. Most of those types of people are doctors, high paid lawyers, things like that. And drug dealers. It is always interesting because I don't do that well financially, but I don't do bad and there's no way I'd be able to afford a house like that. I, I would love to know how much money they really are making because they got to be making more than 200 and some thousand dollars a year, I'd say. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day and it would be awesome to see you come back again tomorrow. First impression of the Sphinx was now that I saw it on the ground in person, there was something wrong with the Egyptological dating. Because when you look at the Sphinx, as a geologist with a geological eye, this was not weathered by wind and sand. This was not desert erosion and weathering that I saw on the Sphinx, the body of the Sphinx, which is very difficult to tell because it's been heavily repaired and reworked, but particularly on the walls of what are known as the Sphinx enclosure. The Sphinx enclosure is important because it preserves a lot of the details. And if you haven't, if the audience has not been to Egypt, they should realize that when they carved the Sphinx, it's all solid bedrock, only the head initially was above the ground surface. You carved, they carved down into the rock to free up the body, what I call the core body of the Sphinx. And it's that core body and the walls of the enclosure, more or less the quarry around it, if you want to use that term, that show these ancient weathering precipitation, erosional features that are incompatible with the last 5,000 years of climatic history on the eastern edge of the Sahara. I really am enjoying learning about Egypt and the pyramids and the Sphinx. I, I think that the Sphinx, if anything, it was already there and it was remolded or reconstructed to have the, the face that it has. I think it was a completely different image altogether back in the day, but 
when the Egyptians started working on it, I think that they just reformed its face to their image and their appeal, maybe. It could be a far fetch. But I like to think that, and maybe it's already been discovered, if there is a system inside of the Sphinx, like a, a cavern or a building, maybe it's a temple or something, because if you look at its paws, and the front of it, I'm, I'm sure it's supposed to be a representation of like toenails or fingernails, but they look like perfectly slotted doors. They just look like they've been covered up with brick. And it just makes me wonder if at some point in time that this was used as a ritual, like the inside of the Sphinx was used as like a ritual, a ritual ground or something. There's got to be something. And we are getting more advanced technology that can start echo uh, echo vibrating inside it, or I don't know what it is exactly, but there is a technology where they can vibrate inside of caverns and see if it's hollow or not. And I really hope that they've done that with this, and maybe there is a hollow chamber on the inside because that would be extremely fascinating. Or perhaps that that is a fossilized creature of the past and it was just reformed again into the Egyptians image and that's just literally a petrified creature of the past. What my soda? Who got whose cards are these though? Bonds. You got them today? You got another pack? Can you see? That's a joker. Let me see real quick. Okay, it's a queen. Like, you see what I'm saying? You see a little scratch right there? Right there, yeah, they all have scratches on it, bro, the face card. See, this one's not a face card, it doesn't have it. Look, every face card has a scratch on it. Bro, only the face card. Bro. Have scratches. See? See? Bro, what you want to do? Huh? What you want to do? Just get my bed back at 2K. Alright. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with who Aiden Ross is or 21 Savage, but Apparently, there's this thing that just happened with 21 Savage and him trying to cheat Aiden Ross out of a lot of money, like $200,000 or something like that, with gambling, technically, either by, by playing the NBA video game or card games or dice. And apparently, 21 Savage came in with a rigged deck of cards. Now, I'm not going to lie. I, for $200,000, I'm also going to have to check everything to make sure it's not... Uh, scam or you're trying to cheat me because he apparently brought in loaded dice as well that were just rolling straight tens and old sevens and things like that you can tell that he is someone that's juked a lot of people in the past where he's he's hustled his way into the money but um i it's funny because with the cards when i was a kid i was kind of the same i created my own deck of cards well i didn't create the deck of cards i had a deck of cards that had symbols on them and everything so I took um I took a pen and for each card I marked a symbol that I knew what that card was when I was looking at the back end of the card so if you were <laughs> if you were an opponent of mine and you had my deck of cards and you had your hand spread I could see what you had in your hand just by the back of your cards and eventually I got caught and it was like a whole thing I was only like 12 or 13 but it was really funny that that is something that people do. And the fact that he got caught, you could kind of tell that he got caught. Like, you can tell that 21 Savage was feeling uncomfortable. This man's missing son was found in his basement while he was on live television. We are getting reports that your son has been found in your basement. Sir? Mr. Bothell, are you, are what? you, yeah, we are getting reports that your son has been found alive in your basement. What? Yes, that's what, if you could hand me that wire very quickly. Yeah, we're getting that right now. 
from from yeah how how could your son be alive in your basement uh, 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 I have, n I have no idea. Now, this is just a report that we are hearing out of Detroit that we're trying to confirm. The boy has been found alive in Daddy's basement. Yeah, Nancy, we just, we're just getting word right now, and we've just basically confirmed that, yeah, the boy has been found alive in the father's basement and we're just getting reports right now that that is true uh and, and literally it just, it just break moment broke moments ago now why the boy why the father didn't know about that for the last 11 days uh what if the child was afraid if there was any other collusion amongst anyone what the child after being missing for 11 days police discovered charlie bothwell in the basement of his home behind a makeshift barricade charlie claims that his stepmother forced him into hiding and instructed him not to make a sound while police were searching the home Later in court, he would also reveal several scars that he claimed were caused by his father beating him with a PVC pipe. Charlie and his two younger brothers were removed from the home and placed under the custody of other family members. Charles Bothwell still claims that he did not know that his son was in his basement and that he was not responsible for any abuse. He was sentenced to only 18 months of probation, and Charlie's stepmother Dillard accepted a plea deal. The details of this deal were not made public. That's crazy. I kind of remember when this happened a long time ago. Um... I do not, that, why, what, why, what was the purpose behind it all, why did, why did that happen, why did the little boy have to be locked behind a room in the basement, what, what was the overall goal of that, if any of you know, please leave a comment down below, because honestly, that's just sad, and it, it, it drives me crazy as to why would someone do something so wild, and why would you do something like that, like, I, I don't know, I really don't know. The feeling of depression for what seems like a lifetime Asking all the questions Feeling like you cannot breathe Under possession Demons on the rise Ascension It's time for me To step in To take over your mind I found this really fascinating. I like seeing old footage of the past. And it, it just, it kind of makes me think, you know, we had the same fascination with phone, well, not phones. We had the same fascination with camera technology back then as we still do today. There's still people out there today on the streets pointing their camera at people's faces and people having the same reaction as they walk by. And that just is like mind blowing to me that, you would think now it would have been more accepted, but it's still a thing today. Like, uh, people are still doing this. And another thing that it's kind of morbid to think about, but everybody that you see in this video, they're probably no longer alive. And that's kind of crazy as well to think about. Like, everybody in these videos are probably no longer with us. So that's another really crazy thing to think about. Have you ever heard of the Poughkeepsie tapes? It's a collection of 800 tapes shot by serial killer Edward Carver. They were a video record from the point of abduction to the post-mortem mutilation of all of his victims. <laughs> Starting with the first one, eight-year-old Jennifer Gorman.
Hey. I like your dolls. I said, I like your dolls. What's that one's name? Susie. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're not supposed to have bad manners either. You know, if, if I was the big bad wolf, there's nothing you can do about it. You, you want to say something to the camera? Like what? Oh, maybe, maybe you could, you could say I am, I am a happy, pretty little girl. No. <laughs> you want to see what it looks like through the camera? No. Here. Oh. Her body was found 50 miles away from her house, and what he did to her was downright evil. But what he did to his second victim was just plain demonic. I am fully aware that the Poughkeepsie tapes are not real. I think that they are a wonderfully shot series of films that are not real. They're definitely not real. You can Google it up, and it is a proven fact that it's not real. Now, some of them are referenced off of real events that may have happened in the world, but the actual film itself is not at all real. Uh, I used to be interested in this because I wanted to do found footage content a long time ago, and I'm talking about when I was like a teenager. When I first seen, uh, even before a teenager, when I first seen the movie The Blair Witch Project, I was addicted to that form of content and I wanted to create it. And I still kind of do, but uh, I, I've always been interested in these uh, fake tapes because they do seem very real. They're very dreadful. And a lot of people thought that when this came out, that it was real. A lot of people really, really thought that it was real. And to me, as a director, that is like an award-winning moment in life when people think that your creation is real. And I would like to create something kind of similar. It sounds a little messed up, I know. But uh, leave a comment down below, because I, I, could, I could do that today. Like, I could make that kind of content, and it's really disturbing, really creepy, but it's still not real. And if you would be interested in seeing that, leave a like, comment down below saying you'd be interested in it, because I could make that type of content to put on, like, YouTube Shorts, TikTok, even on here to react to, to show you my work that I've done. Because I think that would be a fun little hobby to do. It's, it's, very, it's very challenging to do that kind of content and make it seem genuine, I think. Ha! Bitch, is this cake? <laughs> no, it's oh, not. Like, no, this oh, is it's cake. cake. I just wanted to add that because I love her laugh. It's so off the top. <laughs> it's so funny. Over there. It's over there. It's over there. Is it lightning? No, 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 no. That's big. What the fuck? What the hell is that? Yeah, bro. Everyone's doing the same thing. What the hell is that? To me, that looked like a transformer arc blowing, probably out in the distance. I think I could even hear the hum of the transformer going out, 
it, I've seen a lot of these types of videos of this happening recently. Uh, it seems like a lot of Transformers are going out everywhere. I don't know if it's just due to weather or if someone's messing with the Transformers with doing what they're not supposed to do, maybe dropping metal in it or something like that. But uh, I'm pretty sure that that was a Transformer arc weld. Arc weld. What? I'm pretty certain that that is a Transformer blowing. And that is pretty intense. It, it is bright. So for performance issues, Pizza Hut decided to fire a staple in the community, Miss Miranda. You were with them for 13 years. What do you have to show for that? Did they give you any kind of compensation when they let you go or nope, any kind nope. of? Nope, they did nothing of a kind. I got two awards last year for having the best performance, the best um You got two sales. awards, yes. two awards for best performance. And what was the other? Top sales. And top sales. And, and they tried to tell me my performance was down. And now they tell you your performance is down. And so... Pizza Hut just decided to to let you go, even though you're doing all this great stuff for your community yes. here in Swanee County. So you've known Miranda for a while, right? Um, Many years. And the community knows Miranda, too, from Pizza yes. Hut? When we first started, it was Christmas and Thanksgiving food baskets. So how did that work with the food baskets? What did that do for we uh, all, Swanee County? Oh, my goodness. We we fed thousands. I'm being honest with you. And... In 2023, we had over 450 come in and eat and then not mention who carried out. So whose di who's dime was this on? Her dime and all the other volunteers. Just like last week, she took over, I don't know how many 60. pizzas, 60 pizzas to the local school so they could have a pizza party. You're feeding people. You're taking pizzas to the the schools to to feed the kids and they just decide to let you go because your performance has yes, has gone down is what yes, they so said that's what they said wow how do you feel about that i've i've been hurt heartbroken angry mad um you were crying i was i, I mean you. i was devastated crying because i this is that, this is my job this is what i did for the last 13 years i don't know what i'm going to go and do now i don't have a clue because i was the rgm of a store and then if there was something wrong, you could have come and told me instead of letting me go. I've, I've had no write-ups, no nothing. I've you've got, never had any write-ups, no. and so they just decided to come let you go. And That's after true. you've been with this company, you've you've committed to Pizza Hut here in Live Oak for the past 13 years of your life, and they just decided to come let you go. Yes, sir. This is, what, this is something I can see myself doing. This and, is really what you wanted to do. I mean, that's 13 years is a long time. Yes, though. and now I get blindsided and fired and... No severance, no nothing. I don't even get vacation days that I have. That I have, um, I had 129 vacation hours, and I was told I do not get those. All the best for this individual. I hope that people see this video on TikTok, see it on my YouTube, see it on everybody else's social medias that they're posting, and can help this lady out. There's no fundraiser or anything for this lady, as far as I could see. But I, I really hope the best for her. And I hope that she can take ambition and try to start up her own food service. Because if she's dedicated and she really enjoys that style of work and she has a, a community that knows her, I think she could make it very far. It just is a, it's a hurdle to get to the start. Catch the train. Catch the train. <laughs> Hell yeah. This is the army stuff. The this military stuff. This is Talladega, Alabama. They're heading north. Oh, oh shit ton of it. Guys, this is this is military military great shit. Y'all. This is this is a lot of military stuff. Humvees. Fucking look. Gun, gun, guns. Satellites. Portable water. National Guard stuff looks like for military use only. And look, it says right here on the bottom right here, for military use only. That's what those white signs say. What the fuck?
Go in north. You wanna get to heaven? I mean, I'm not a hundred percent sure what those are used for, but I do know she said that she was in Talladega, Alabama. And that is where the Department of Military is. They have one in Talladega. So it makes me wonder if maybe they're just transporting from one section, uh, from one sector to the next and just storing them. But it could also mean something big is going down. So I see military equipment in my my area of stay go by all the time. I live right by Air Force bases, Army bases, all of that. Who knows? What do you guys think? You think it's something fishy or do you think that this is just storage purposes? All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.